Narcissists are liars. How often are you in a relationship with someone that you start noticing small little things in the arguments, in the regular conversation, in regular day-to-day -day life that you start looking and you're like, it doesn't add up. Like there's something missing there. There's something that's going on that I can't put my finger on. And a lot of times in relationships, I think women have a very good intuition, period. But a lot of times you'll have partners that have just an intuition of like something is off. The communication has changed, the connection has changed, the interaction has changed, the sex has changed. Like something is different. And oftentimes in those moments, they'll kind of hide it or they'll push it down and be like, no, like it's, it's probably just me. You know, maybe they bring it up to the toxic person. And they say, yeah, it's just you. Like they put the blame back on you. But ultimately when it boils down to it, a lot of times in the relationships, your gut isn't wrong. It's just you're being lied to. And time and time again, the narcissist will bring these lies up and will continue to manipulate the situation for their best interest, for their own gain. I think the lies contribute so much to the idea of the trauma bond. And the reason why is it develops something called cognitive dissonance. At its very base level, cognitive dissonance is where actions don't match words or words don't match actions, but they're both there and they're both very confusing. Think of it this way. If I, at the very base level, if I slap you in the face and then I say, I love you. And then I slap you in the face and then I say, I love you. Then I slap you in the face and I say, I love you. Then I slap you in the face and then I say, I love you. It might start to be confusing because you're like, wait a second. I'm associating the slap with the other person saying they love me. Over a period of time, you start to associate that that slap means that the other person loves you or that slap demonstrates love, or that slap shows that that's the only love you can get. And oftentimes will make you feel worthless, devalued, and helpless in that relationship. Oftentimes hopeless thinking there's not a way out and there's not a person who would love me because I'm such an awful person or I don't have self-worth or I don't have that self-esteem because you start internalizing and taking that. The narcissist puts that on you through periods of lies, through the highs and the lows, through the ups and the downs, through the back and forth, through everything that comes to a place where they lie so much. With that cognitive dissonance, it's very much in your face and oftentimes along the lines of like gaslighting, of you looking and you seeing something happen and they say it didn't happen of seeing an action happen and they deny that it ever existed, of seeing words that were spoken and they deny that you ever heard that. I was talking to someone the other day on a one-on-one -on -one and they, she was recounting this whole conversation that she had uh, with her ex-husband and they had this conversation in the kitchen and it blew up into this big argument and everything. And in their house they had security cameras and they had cameras in, in different sections of the house and they had a camera there that recorded not just video, but also audio. So as they're arguing, as they're going back and forth, the, the, the husband, uh, the ex-husband at this time, but the husband said, you know, a certain phrase. And she was like, I can't believe like you said that to me. And his response was like, I didn't. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I didn't say that. She went and grabbed the iPad, played back the video for him to be able to watch their conversation just a few moments before, played back the video and watched as he said that phrase. He looked at the video and he looked at her and he's like, I didn't say that. She's like, what are you talking about? Like here, it's here in the video. So she played it again. She's like, are you saying like, that's not you? He's like, I'm just saying I didn't say that. Like that, that didn't happen. They said it so many times, he gaslit so many times with that lie that she ended up having to take the iPad to different of her friends and family, play the video sight unseen and just be like, what did the person say? And then they'd repeat the phrase that he would say and she'd be like, thank you. Because even though she was faced with the truth, even though she was faced with the actual evidence of what happened, the lies and the gaslighting had been so high and been so great that she was doubting her own reality. She was doubting while she watched that video, and what I'm watching, is that actually real? Or am I making it up? 
because that's what a narcissist wants you to think. They want you to think that you're being oversensitive, that you're being, you know, jealous, that you're just blowing things out of proportion. When a lot of times your gut might be leading you in the right direction, but they're going to lie, gaslight, and manipulate so that you don't get an idea of what what is actually going on. With the lying, it stems from the idea that nothing is ever their fault. They don't want to take accountability, responsibility, or blame for anything that's going on. And lying oftentimes seems like the easiest and the best route to be able to do that. Now, you might think, like, it doesn't sound very easy. Well, no, but for the narcissist, they think it's the easiest way because they're avoiding that accountability, that responsibility. They're avoiding guilt and they're avoiding shame. And so in that aspect, when you're looking for a quick fix, like just being able to lie about it, have it disappear, feels like the easiest option, feels like the best option for a narcissist. So they just make it disappear, compartmentalize it, shove it to the side, throw it in the back of their mind and move on. I like this, okay, I don't have to worry about it. Then you have the lies of omission. How many times did you catch your narcissist in a lie and then they're like, oh, well, I just forgot. Or, oh, well, I didn't tell you about that. Or, oh, that wasn't important. Or, oh, um, I didn't want to tell you that because I didn't want you to hurt you. And you'll find different aspects as you watch their stories, as you watch how they communicate, that there starts to become gaps. There starts to become bigger, longer, different gaps in their stories that just doesn't make sense. And you start to ask about it, and maybe sometimes the truth comes out, or maybe sometimes they just make up something crazy. But do you notice gaps in their stories? Do you notice gaps in their communication or things that just don't add up? And as you start to look, a lot of times they think like, oh, it's okay. Like, I didn't actively lie. I didn't say I didn't do this. I just didn't say I did anything. That's still a lie. But a lot of times the narcissist will make you think that it's not or will try to gaslight into thinking that that's okay, that they just forgot. With people in memory, sometimes it can get tricky because people are like, wait a second, my narcissist, they forgot everything. Okay, well, there's also a big aspect that forgetting is an easy way to avoid. If I can avoid what you told me, then I don't have to feel accountable or responsible for the things that you've asked me to do. And so a lot of times there would be the aspect of like, oh, I forgot. Oh, I didn't remember. When the majority of the time there was that remembrance, there was that thought there, but there is the active thought of how do I get out of this? How do I run away from it as quick as possible? Well, I'll just say I forgot. Now, is there times I think that narcissists have gaps in their memory? Yes, but I think those are farther in the past than they are the present. The majority of those gaps that happen are normally immediately in the present. I think over a period of time, as you have someone who has been lying for years, who's been gaslighting people for years, can end up turning it back on themselves because they don't want to acknowledge something that they have inside. They end up gaslighting themselves and end up having memory gaps. I don't have the, the data or the proof for it. I just have my own life to say like, hey, this is what I've experienced. And I've experienced like the different gaps of trying to remember the past or trying to remember early childhood or trying to remember specific events and not be able to remember certain things or have my wife remind me of things. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to say like that didn't happen. I'm sure it probably did, but I don't remember that at all. And it might be stuff that like I hid or I compartmentalized and like threw in the box. But the narcissist lies constantly. They're going to spend a lot of time rationalizing, rationalizing their behavior than they ever will improving it, than they ever will like trying. And I think the thing that's probably the most confusing for survivors and, and people that are victims of narcissistic abuse is like trying to understand and clear the fog. Someone came up with the idea that fog stands for fear, obligation, and guilt. Trying to, fe- trying to clear the confusion that all that stuff puts on your mind, the confusion that that puts in front of your eyes, that you're not sure what is actually right, what is actually true in the relationship. Am I actually in a real relationship? Like what is actually going on? And a lot of times the narcissist leads you into that fog. They lead you into the aspect, they think of it, they take you into the middle of a field and leave you there and let the fog come in. The fog of their lies of their gaslighting, of their manipulation, of their future faking. And it gets to the place that you look around and you can't see your way out. 
And that's when the narcissist has you. Because at that point, when you're in the fog that they constructed, that they built, that means they can guide you any way they want you to go. They can push you in one direction. They can make you react. They can have you do reactive abuse. They can make you seem like the crazy one because you don't have an idea of what's actually true. And you're stuck in that mindset. You're stuck in the thought process of where am I? What's going on? I don't know what's right, what's wrong, what's up, what's down. You might be stuck in a trauma bond. You might be in that detox phase, trying to get away from that addictive person. I want to get you to clarity in future goals, vision, values. And that's what I try to work with people on every single day to be able to get them through the process and get them to a place where they set boundaries. Boundaries so they don't go back and boundaries moving forward. They don't get in a relationship with another toxic person. If you want to talk sometime, there's a link down below, rawmotivations.com. Download the NARC app, N-A-R-C, NARC, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community, to find a group of like-minded people, to join our weekly secured lives so you can ask questions about anything, to join our monthly Zoom calls so you can interact face-to-face with other survivors, hear coaching uh, uh, week uh, monthly in that app. Love to be able to interact with you, with you there. Love to be able to see you. Thanks so much.